Hey folks, welcome back. This is Dave with uh, with Wyoming Old Iron. So I'm going to continue the microwave series here today, and I want to check. I want to do door switches. Now, most technicians understand how door switches work. But I get a lot of phone calls from techs who don't really understand how microwaves work. I get a lot of um, techs that call in and say, oh, well, uh, my I, I ordered all the door switches and replaced them all. For, for whatever the problem is, and at this point it's irrelevant, there is never, I repeat, never a reason to change all the door switches in a microwave. Absolutely never. Most microwaves have three door switches. This particular microwave, being a drawer microwave, has four. Okay, you've got a, you've got a door switch on each side that proves the door is closed. That, that allows the unit to come on, run, and heat. The, there is what's called, all microwaves have what's called a monitor switch. Its job is to say, okay, we think the microwave's running and producing microwave radiation with the door open, blow the fuse, blow the breaker, shut the unit down. And then there is a fourth switch. And this switch tells the, com the control panel that the door or drawer is closed and for the keypad to take commands. If your keypad works, any of the buttons work on your keypad, that switch is good. Now I want to, on this particular model, it would be the left hand switch as you face it. You see the, the thin green and white wires here. Those, if we follow them back, go all the way to the, the main board. They're telling the main board right now that the drawer is closed. If it were open, the keypad either wouldn't work or start wouldn't work or whatever. If your unit runs, that switch is good. There is no reason to change that switch. In 30, what is it now? 33 years of working on microwaves, 32 years of working on microwaves. I, I, didn't, I didn't ever get trained to do them at the beginning of my career. Um, I've seen that switch be bad twice. Okay, so if you're a technician or you're a homeowner, and you say, oh, well, I think it's a door switch problem. I'm going to change all the door switches. Don't need to. If you have a unit that won't run, it's going to be your door or drawer proving switch or switches. Again, in this case, you have two. Most microwaves today, you have one. If you have a unit that's blowing the fuses consistently, Maybe you change the regular, sw the, the proving switch and the monitor switch. But there's no reason to change the switch that tells the control panel the door or drawer is closed. So now that I've been on that soapbox, I wanted to show how... Okay guys, sorry about the interruption there. See if we can get this meter set up there where you can see it. There. Okay, so if you'll notice, the meter's set on this little horseshoe thing. That's ohms for those of you who don't know. So if you look down here at the door switch, you'll see a terminal on what's considered the bottom of the door switch. And you'll see a terminal right here. Now this is a two-wire door switch that is uh, normally open, I think.
Okay. Yeah, this is the normally open contact. You see how that goes to zero? It means with the door closed, there's an electrical path through here. If you open the drawer, see if I can get this open without plugging the unit in. There we go. Okay. So once you open the door, you'll notice this OL in the screen here on the meter. You'll see that doesn't go away. So this switch is not being actuated now. It's in its normal position, hence you have an open electrical path here. That's how you check the switches. Now, there can be two wire switches where instead of one here, there's a terminal up here, and that's the normally closed terminal. And there can be switches that have all three terminals. But always, this is your common, you're always going to check from there to the other terminals, and you can open the door or drawer to actuate the switches. Now, one last thing you need to look for is the adjustment of the switches. I want to put these wires back on. There we go. Okay, so let me see if I can get this set up for you here. Ah, okay. You can see there's a Phillips screw there and a Phillips screw there. You can see here this hook on the drawer front. That will come in and hit these red buttons and actuate these switches. In this case, both switches which are normally open, will close when the drawer is closed. Another test that's fairly accurate is if you push on these little buttons, the actuator buttons, hear that click? That usually means the switch is good. It's not 100%, and I have had them click where the switch is bad, but that's how you check them. So that's door switches. We'll cover later when we get to dead and no heat complaints why you check the switches, because that's most often, and then running, uh, running and not heating or counting down and not running. All of those are possibilities. So, but that's how you check door switches. So if you like the videos here on the appliances, please hit the subscribe button. Eventually I'll get to enough subscribers when I have enough time here and uh, to monetize my YouTube channel. And again, I do want to get busy with the, uh, with the old iron out there as well. It's just hard to do when you got to set everything up yourself. So with that note, We'll say goodbye on this video, and we'll bring you back on the next one.